So there we go. So I'm going to hand this off because this is something different. Now, we brought Brian in a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's really here for reinforcements for me because there's so much complexity. There's so much content. They have such a full featured product. I'm still very novice with it. So I have to bring him in to show us how to use it because I'm still learning. But there's so much value in it. I, from what I'm just looking at it, I just go, God, I've got I've to learn how to use this. So he's here to just help us look at the kind of information you can glean from ch checking on sentiment to, and see like, OK, how is this going to help me make better trading decisions? It's not necessarily, oh, there's going to be glaring glaring uh, sell signals up here, but there might be insinuation here. There might be something we can deduce that maybe the market is a little tired here and that the, the, the crowd sentiment is waning a bit. Well, it would, be the, it would be the same thing down here, right? Is there going to be an opportunity here based on the, the, the on-chain metrics or the crowd dynamics or just the general crypto buzz, right? Well, fuck, well, you know, what do we call it? Just the crypto, well, I guess we don't call it crypto Twitter, crypto X, right? Well, what's the, what's going on 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 X, what's the sentiment? Being mindful of the fact that the crowd is always wrong. So if they're, I can almost guarantee you, very bullish up here, right? Where are we now? Oh, crypto's crashing. Okay, with that, I'll turn it over to you, Brian. Absolutely, yeah. It's been obviously a, a massive downswing in the markets over the past week. You've talked mostly about Bitcoin, which is our focus as well. Uh, everything is kind of living and dying as it has throughout the history of crypto on how Bitcoin is able to perform. And, and obviously with its uh, what appears to be about a 13.4 percent downswing in the past week, uh, it's dragged a lot of altcoins down a whole lot more than that 13 percent that Bitcoin's showing. So really <laughs> what we're looking at now is how the sentiment is shifting. How are people reacting to this drop? Do they think that it was, you know, that the top that we saw last week, do they think that's kind of the permanent top for 2024 or do they think it's only going to be the permanent top for a couple of weeks? And this is just a tiny blip in the radar that they can buy into the dip on and, and hopefully cash in on with this opportunity presenting itself. So many don't quite see it this way, but it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. There isn't an inevitable path for Bitcoin's price to go up and down, especially in a given week. It's very much based on the fear and greed that is fluctuating on a daily basis, depending on, you know, whether meme coins are, are jumping up or whether AI tokens are jumping up or if it's too Bitcoin dominant. Everyone is constantly pushing and pulling and overreacting to the fluctuations that are happening in the market. And right now, <coughs> if we take a look at the watch list here, uh, we see several different categories, you know, Coinbase assets down 13 and a half percent, ERC 20s down 15 percent, um, meme coins. Take a look at this 47 and a half percent drop in total market cap over the past week. This watch list factors in for the top 100 meme coins. So that tells you a little bit about where we were a bit overinflated uh, one week ago compared to right now. Um, I should also mention, you know, we have all sorts of uh, special uh, watch lists like strong and oversold. Um, these are the ones who that typically are showing. Uh, I'll even open it for you. It's it's the the assets that are typically showing signs of high on chain activity compared to usual, uh, and maybe better than average opportunities for dip buying if you are on the side of dip buying right now. Ethereum, Cardano, Dogecoin, Chainlink. Uh, Matic, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Uniswap, Arbitrum, Immutable X, OKB, just to name a few that appear to have better than average on-chain metrics, despite you know what obviously is a universal drop across the crypto markets right now. So, with that, you know, before we transition, uh, let me know what I can kind of expand on there and clarify. Well, when you say something uh, is oversold, how are you guys defining that within sentiment? Yeah, typically we look at a metric. Uh, I'll show you right here. It's known as MVRV. And what MVRV indicates is whether or not uh, the average wallet for any given asset over a given period of time, uh, usually we look at something like the 30-day average trading returns because it's a nice average midterm time frame that a lot of people are able to trade on without being hooked on the screens on a daily basis. 
So right here, we're looking at Bitcoin's MVRV, for example. It shows that there's just slightly uh, a tick below 0%, indicating that Bitcoin is officially oversold on the 30-day time frame because traders are down 1.5%. Uh, when factoring in for any wallet that has been active in the past 30 days. On the longer term time scale, looking at the 365 day here, the average wallets are still up 42%. So it really depends on whether you're focusing on more of a swing trading strategy from week to week or month to month, or if you're just hodling and kind of letting things sit where they may despite all of this volatility. The long-term trend still shows that we're, we're a bit high uh, and there could be some arguable more pain that could be coming up to get our average returns a little bit closer to historically what its resting state is at 0%. Sometimes that happens just from markets flattening out for a few months and, and chilling out, or it can happen from a further drop. There's different ways that it can happen. But the, the big one we're focused on right now is the 30-day, which just in the last 24 hours, really, we finally saw it dip back below 0% for the first time in about six-ish weeks or so. And obviously, this time when it was below 0%, if you look at where prices were, 42K or so, prices just absolutely erupted just from this tiny, tiny drop. You can see when it was at its lowest point here, the 30-day MBRV was down to about negative 9.5%, meaning the average wallet was at a nine and a half percent deficit compared to where they bought the Bitcoin that was sitting in the wallet. So obviously this was the huge bottom on January 23rd. We had just dropped back below 40K. Panic was ensuing. People were kind of calling that big bull cycle that had ran from mid-October to mid-January over right here. Uh, there was a lot of capitulation, fear, calls to sell, and obviously, people who were panicking are kicking themselves now because prices absolutely erupted from that day. So when we say oversold, it's really referring to percentage returns being well into the negative for the average wallet out there. And this is one of our, our top indicators that we refer to on a daily basis. Beautiful. I mean, how powerful, I could, particularly with the time horizon. Yeah, there's there's so much you can really gather from metrics like these. And another thing we're watching right now is how the, the big key stakeholders are behaving at this moment. We specifically like to, to check out the 10 to 10,000 BTC wallets to get a grasp of how much the big players are accumulating or dumping at any given time. And in short, it's good news if you are staying bullish and uh, have your diamond hands in full in full effect right now because they really have not dumped much at all this bright green is measuring the percentage of the total supply that they've held which you can see since early february when we talked about that that local bottom they were holding 66.2 percent of the supply now it's at 66.75 percent that 0.55 percent increase may not sound like much but it's billions of dollars when you're talking about the total cap of bitcoin when you talk about the actual amount of Bitcoin, it's even easier to understand. You can simply see, if you look at the top left of my screen, on February 4th, they were holding 12.98 million BTC collectively. Now it's up to 13.12. So those six weeks or seven weeks that have gone by, uh, we've seen an accumulation from 10 to 10K BTC wallets of about 135,000 Bitcoin during that time. So that's good news. The so-so news is the fact that stable coins from these same shark and whale tiers are dropping, meaning the buying power, the dry powder, as many like to refer to it as, it's been going down for quite a bit. Uh, I could even zoom out. We'll look at the last year. And you can see these red and blue lines representing Tether and USD coin wallets that hold between $100,000 to $10 million. They've been going down all the way since June of 2023. And yes, prices have absolutely erupted as it was going down. But the good news is this green line has been moving up consistently. So this green line indicating how much Bitcoin they were buying 
with these stable coins that were going down was at least rising significantly, indicating that a, a price rise could be justified. But if we start to see this green line, either of these green lines, but especially this dark green one showing the total amount they're holding, if that starts to drop along with their dry powder, that's a sign that money is moving out of crypto altogether 